Teamwork in CSGO is only slightly, slightly less important than being able to move and shoot, so it's about time I covered it. I'll assume you've already seen my communication video, which is important if you're to interact with your team. Click on the section you'd like to skip to, or simply watch the whole video like normal people do. Good communication at buy time. In competitive mode, you have a 15 second buy time. This is for buying weapons, of course, but also for discussing strategies with your team. I leave it to the last moment to buy my equipment, since what I get depends on what our team's going to do. If we decide to go somewhere big and open, I might want a sniper. If we're somewhere enclosed, an SMG. One of my teammates may upgrade their weapon, meaning that I can pick up their old one for free. Sometimes if your team doesn't have much money, they'll want to do an eco round where everybody saves money so that they can get better equipment in the next round. If you buy the moment the buy time starts, you could ruin a plan like this. If no plan is made, take responsibility and say something. It at least gives your teammates something to work with. People will normally let you know if they need you to buy them something during this time, but be on the lookout for those lovely teammates who suffer in silence with a low bank balance. If you have spare money, consider dropping them a weapon to promote synergy within your team. Be sure to let them and everybody else know how generous you're being, otherwise this might happen. Our mission is oh, fuck it, man. Once the round starts, plans will inevitably change based on information your team gathers about the enemy. Such data needs to be communicated efficiently. For example, if you hear somebody's footsteps at long A, say, footsteps long. Not, oh no, they're all rushing to A armed with big shooty weapons. If you see the enemies, even better. Say how many you saw. If I see three, I like to say at least three to cover my bases in case there's actually four. So in short, say only what needs to be said. More is less. Remember that everybody is trying to play the game. They want to be able to hear for enemies themselves, so don't fill their speakers with your voice, particularly when you're angrily shouting about something they don't care about. I say this, but I rage just as much as anybody when I die. Probably more. I just have to let somebody know about it. There are methods of dealing with this without disturbing your team. Perhaps spam somebody you don't like on Steam with everybody unfair that happens. Why not go downstairs and cry to your mum? Alternatively, make a compilation of these deaths and make it into a sob story video that nobody cares about instead. Whatever you do, try to keep your rants away from your team. Knowing the map. Knowing the map is obviously really important. How are you supposed to help if you don't know where you, or the enemies, could be at any moment? If you're new to the game, focus on one or two maps and learn them. You can branch out to others later on. I recommend Dust 2. It's simple and the most commonly played map in the game. I absolutely love it, even after having played it for so many years. It could take a few rounds to memorise, but it will take many more to master. I find it takes about two hours to get a decent understanding of most maps. You could do this in deathmatch, but casual's better for learning whether teams meet each other, which is essential for competitive play. I have a handy guide showing where you're likely to run into people in Dust 2 if you're interested. You could always play against bots. They're good for doing this, plus you can always play as a bot after you die, meaning that you're never sat there bored. Checking the radar. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Regularly check the radar to see where your teammates are. Any enemies that have been spotted will also show up here. It doesn't take much to understand where the strengths and weaknesses are in your defence and to react accordingly. If you see a hole in your team's defence, call out to your team and let them know. Using the radar is the best way of understanding the current situation on the map and I'd be completely blind and vulnerable if I didn't use it. By understanding which areas of the map are covered by teammates, you can focus on the other areas, instantly improving your chances of survival in the event of a fight. Coordinating actions. At every level of CSGO, the thing that separates a losing team from the winning one is the amount of teamwork involved. Think about the number of times you've died in CSGO. Some of them will be from being outmatched in a fair fight, but all too often you'll be penetrated from behind while dealing with somebody in front of you, or simply overwhelmed by masses of enemies who storm your position together. It's frustrating, but you're sampling the power of teamwork. It's great when it all goes to plan and you're part of one of those powerful assaults on a particular position. The radar is handy for this. Coordinate attacks on the enemy positions with other teammates to improve both your chances and those of your team. All too often people run in one at a time, which makes it very easy for defending forces to focus their attacks. If defending an area, please check the radar to see where your teammates are. Adapt to the situation so that you're defending the weakest entrance. It's in your best interests to protect your teammates from being shot in the back, so be sure to mention anything important that you see or hear. I find it inspiring to watch the best teams in the world play against each other, as they employ effective tactics that can teach you a lot about what works in CSGO. You'll see some teammates toss smoke grenades whilst others focus on flashes, or pushing with rifles while others cover them with snipers. It's all done within seconds, but step back and analyse their actions and you'll be amazed by the amount of thought that they've invested into their strategies. 
Dealing with teammates. There's a reason that people play with friends. It's because random people are unpredictable. Far too many people refuse to communicate and when they do there's often a language barrier. The good news is that the other team often suffers from this as well. If you're unfortunate enough to get a teammate who team attacks or generally acts like an idiot around you, report them for griefing from the scoreboard screen. Try to carry on playing and don't retaliate. Too much team damage will ban you from the game. The objective. CSGO isn't just about eliminating the other team, and even if it was, it still helps to go after the mission objective. Most matches are played in defuse mode, the one that involves the bomb. I'm going to assume that you know the basic rules. As the terrorists, you have to keep the bomb hidden from the CTs, as knowing where the bomb is will let them converge on your location. A lot of rounds, the bomb will spend some of its time on the floor so that terrorists can attack without the CT spotting the bomb carrier. Once the bomb is planted, it is then the top priority for the terrorists to prevent it from being defused. CTs then have to attack, giving the terrorists the choice of where to hide and when to engage, giving them the advantage. As CTs, you have five people to defend two objectives. It's manageable provided that you play defensively. Attacking them may have the element of surprise, but getting killed gives them information and a man advantage, which will help them for the rest of the round. It's best to stop them from planting by defending the sites well. Ideally, you want to kill the bomb carrier before this happens, so you can then guard the bomb and there's no way that the terrorists can win unless they pick it up or kill you. Inevitably, these tactics will occasionally fail and the bomb will be planted. CTs are then at a disadvantage since they then have to attack. Hostage maps aren't quite as fair, which is why they're not played as often and why I won't cover them here in much depth. The terrorist and counter-terrorist roles are reversed and the hostages act almost like bomb sites that the CTs must attack, but instead of planting a bomb, they must then lead the hostage back to their start zone. This style of play means that the terrorists can always play defensively, first by guarding the hostages, then later on by defending the CT spawn and by waiting for their return. It's worth mentioning that attempting and completing mission objectives will earn your team extra money, even if you don't win the round. For example, planting the bomb will earn all terrorists an extra $800 for the next round, which is the difference between having armour and not. Always try to get the bomb down, your team will love you for it. And finally, we have the sacrifice. Your interests will not always match the teams and sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself to help pave the way to a victory. Many players will be so occupied with getting to the top of the scoreboard that they'll happily let their teammates die or have rounds lost just so that they can get a few more kills. Solution? Focus on this number instead, or simply avoid looking at these numbers and ranks. They don't always show a fair picture of how important everybody is. Let's look at how some sacrifices can benefit your team. You could try distracting enemies to buy time for your teammates. This is known as baiting, where one person is offered as an attempting bait while a teammate gets into a position to trap the attacking party. Hopefully your teammates will take advantage of this. Another sacrifice is done by rushing. Being first into a combat zone doesn't normally end well. You'll likely die and your teammates will get the credit if you win, but somebody has to do it. If you lead by example, you may be lucky enough to have other people take responsibility in later rounds. When defending an area, if you look at the radar, you may notice a teammate guarding an entrance. Don't always trust them to do this. I've been caught out when they've decided to go for a knife kill on an attacking enemy, during which time the enemy has managed to shoot several teammates, compromising the entire round. It's selfish and a bit of communication in these situations can go a long way. The dilemma is, are you willing to ruin your score and gaming experience for the greater good? Can you put up with wannabe heroes using you to boost their score, then insulting you because yours is worse? This is a touchy subject. In an ideal world, everybody would be happy to put their team ahead of themselves, but in reality you're always going to get some who will sit back and let you die so that they can hoover up the kills once you've finished softening up the enemies. I can't tell you how to react to this. Once again, it depends on the situation. I don't mind sacrificing myself if I know that my team will make the most of it, or if I can somehow inspire others by performing selfless acts. But when I have a special weapon or am carrying the bomb, I don't consider it worthwhile to sacrifice myself every round, when I may be of more use to my team alive. If you want to become a good player, it's up to you to write your own moral code, as it's that which truly makes you who you are in CSGO. Which sort of player are you? <laughs> Let's move on to grenades, which play a supporting role in games. Even if you can't trust your teammates, you can rely on these friendly little explodey things. 